Bran had a strange dream. In the dream, a three-eyed raven was always guiding him. Waking up, Bran sees his father's righteous son. Theon was sent by Rob to summon Bran to the hall to meet guests. Although Bran was reluctant, Theon had Hodder, Eddard's childhood friend, carry Bran out. Turns out Tyrion's back from the north and stopped by to see Bran. Due to Caitlin's words, Rob was very cold towards Tyrion. Tyrion showed concern when he saw Bran in front of him. He handed a drawing to Bran which was a saddle designed by Tyrion himself. It could help Bran get out of bed and ride a horse to relax. Rob pretended to thank Tyrion for his gift and offered hospitality. But Tyrion didn't appreciate it at all. Theon came out to see Tyrion off. Tyrion taunted Theon as a proton sent by his father in defeat. Now, he was living better in House Stark than in his own house. Theon retorted, sarcastically mentioning the past war. House Lannister won dishonorably by outnumbering their opponents. Tyrion went on to say that if Eddard, his father, saw his heir now, constantly serving his lord, he wouldn't know how to feel. Theon was left speechless by the comeback. Jon Snow continued to train his comrades in the training ground. A chubby recruit named Sam Tarly arrived, and the captain ordered his subordinates to test Sam's skills. As it turned out, Sam, who looked fierce, was easily defeated in just a few moves. However, the captain had no intention of letting Sam off the hook and ordered his men to continue to beat him. Jon Snow couldn't bear to watch and stepped forward to help Sam up. The captain instructed Jon Snow's two companions, along with his own men, to fight against Jon Snow and Sam. In the end, Jon Snow showed his power and single-handedly defeated the three opponents. Sam sincerely thanked Jon Snow for his assistance. His comrades questioned why Sam didn't fight back earlier. Sam meekly admitted that he was a coward and even his own father looked down on him. Khal Drogo led his followers back to their own territory. Jorah briefly explained the situation to Daenerys. Meanwhile, Viserys despised everything there and only wanted to quickly gain power to take back Westeros. Daenerys and Jorah chatted casually, and Jorah talked about his past. He resorted to selling slaves because of his wife's excessive spending. As a result, he was caught by Eddard and exiled, and his wife ran off with someone else. The maid took Sans to the Iron Throne. The maid envisioned a future where Sansa's son would rule the world. However, Sansa interrupted the maid's fantasy. She mentioned what if she gave birth to a girl, and the maid reassured Sansa repeatedly the two of them then discussed the tragic deaths of Sansa's grandfather and uncle in this place. Angrily, Sansa declared that she would never speak to her father again. Although Eddard strongly opposed holding a tournament, Robert's stubbornness led the event to proceed as planned. The captain of the city guard was greatly troubled. Martial artists from all over the country flocked here upon hearing about the tournament, causing significant security risks in the capital. Fights and brawls occurred daily. Eddard had no choice but to allocate funds through Peter Baelish and deploy additional personnel to strengthen security. After the meeting was adjourned, Eddard called on Pycelle and questioned him about the sudden death of Arryn. Pycelle told Eddard that the night before his death, Arryn had borrowed a book from him. Upon hearing this news, Eddard quickly searched for and read the book. It was about the history and origins of the major noble families of the Seven Kingdoms. Once again questioned Pysel about the suspicious circumstances surrounding Arryn's passing. Pysel just focused on telling Eddard that Arryn repeated the phrase the seed is strong before he died. Eddard, listening to this inexplicable last words, could only bid farewell to the elderly Pysel and leave. When Eddard returned to his room, he saw Arya diligently practicing. His youngest daughter followed her teacher Sirio's guidance obediently. Father and daughter chatting about the awakening Bran. Arya expressed her regret that Bran could no longer become a knight. Ed could only reassure her that perhaps Bran would make a fine lord or chancellor in the future. Jon Snow was on duty at the wall when Sam nervously approached him. Jon Snow listened as Sam described his own shortcomings. Jon Snow doesn't understand what he's doing in a body like this on the frozen wall of the north. Sam sadly told Jon Snow that on the day he came of age, his father told him he must immediately join the Night's Watch. He voluntarily gave up his family's land, status, and inheritance rights. 
Otherwise, his father would create the illusion that he had been killed in a hunting accident to appease his mother. Jon Snow listened as Sam told him about his situation, feeling unsettled inside. Upon hearing that Eddard was reading the book borrowed by Arryn before his death, Peter Baelish approached him and shared some cryptic information. Arryn's subordinate, a man named Hugh, was knighted after Arryn's death. Eddard was just about to go find Hugh when Peter Baelish informed him that Varys and Cersei had spies all around him, including his own people. Peter Baelish suggested that Eddard send his trusted men to find Hugh and emphasized that Eddard should also meet a blacksmith. Arryn had met this person multiple times before. Eddard looked at Peter Baelish, unsure whether he should trust him. Eddard's trusted man, Jory, found Hugh. Hugh, newly jazz, is so arrogant he won't even talk to Jory. After hearing Jory's report, Eddard went to the blacksmith's house. From the blacksmith, Eddard learned that Aaron had never come to see him but had actually come to visit Gendry. Eddard called Gendry over and spoke to him about Jory's purpose in finding him. As Eddard looked at the young boy with black hair, he seemed to see something. After leaving, Eddard told Jory that the boy was Robert's illegitimate child. Jory went to meet Robert, and Jame was standing guard at the door. Jame told Jory that Robert liked to make him stand guard when he was indulging in other women. Jame and Jory had fought together in battle, which brought them closer in conversation. But it couldn't change the fact that they had different positions. With his unmatched strength, Robert never gave Jory a chance, so he had to leave first. Joan Snow returned to the dining hall to eat and scolded his companions for mocking Jane. He told them that Sam, like them, was a pitiable person forced to join the Night's Watch. At night, everyone went to sleep. Joan Snow, accompanied by his companions and Grey Wind, went to warn the inner circle not to bully Sam anymore. In the training field, with Joan Snow's support, everyone cooperated and pretended to fight with Sam. But the captain was very angry. He questioned why they didn't sweat during normal times. Did they have to wait until there was a war to spill blood? Joan Snow seemed to have a realization. Viserys has started going mad again. Daenerys kindly asked a handmaiden to call him over for a meal together. However, he felt that his sister was ordering him and humiliating him. He ran into his sister's tent and beat her up. Daenerys fought back in anger and warned him that she is now the queen of the Dothraki. If he dares to cause trouble for her again, she will chop off his hands. Jon Snow and Sam were cleaning on the dining hall. Sam reprimanded the Legion leadership for breaking their oath and running off to play in a nearby town. Jon Snow says he almost lost his virginity to a lost woman back in the day. But when he was about to undress, he remembered his identity as a bastard and didn't want to bring another illegitimate child into the world. The team leader walked in, saw the two older kids playing, and told stories about the year. The encounter with the wildling Mance Raiders men in the forest north of the north. They almost perished in the endless blizzard. Looking at the new recruits who hadn't grown up yet, the captain hated and lectured the says they don't know what the real winner in danger is. Daenerys told Jorah she beat up her brother, as he had always claimed to be the true Dragon King. Jorah smiled and told Daenerys that her late brother Rhaegar was the true Dragon King. And Viserys is nothing. Daenerys, after being enlightened by Jorah, realized that her second brother lacked the leadership abilities. Perhaps they would never be able to return to Westeros. The martial arts tournament proceeded as scheduled. Joffrey's disdain for Sansa's overtures. Peter Baelish came into the bleachers at House Stark to chat with Sansa. The first match began. Gregor Clegane and Sir Hugh took the stage first. Valiant Gregor swiftly killed Hugh in two rounds. Peter Baelish reassured Sansa and others, calming their unease. He told the story of the feud between Sandor and Gregor Clegane. The younger Sandor had played with Gregor's toys, which enraged the brutal Gregor, who pressed his head against burning coals, leaving him with scars that could never be erased. Eddard did not attend the so-called welcoming martial arts tournament. He met Cersei in his office. Cersei insincerely told Eddard to let everyone forget about the unpleasant past, and questioned Eddard's true purpose in taking over as Chancellor. Eddard spoke frankly, 
stating that he was there to help Robert consolidate his rule. The two parted ways once again on bad terms. Caitlin meets Tyrion at an inn on her way back to the north. Tyrion warmly greeted Caitlyn, but she ignored him outright. Caitlyn publicly announced Tyrion's alleged crimes. The crowd surrounded Tyrion with swords. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.